I want to talk about this FAC keyboard firmware for the CH55X series of microcontrollers. Uh, there are a couple of interesting things about this. One is that the CH55X is very cheap, uh, and the other is that its keyboards and key maps are declared using the nickel configuration language. So for example, the WX Studio core board, which uses the CH552, uh, is about a dollar on AliExpress. Or the CH552T microcontroller costs about 60 cents. And the nickel configuration language is one of these JSON plus functions plus types configuration languages. If you like Rust or Haskell or languages like that, it's probably a language you will like. I've come up with two designs which make use of this firmware and these microcontrollers. One is the CH55244, which has 44 keys. Uh, it's very easy to hand solder and it fits in the JJ40 keyboard cases. Another is the CH55248, which uh, was designed for a PCB assembly and is just a typical ortholinear 4x12 keyboard also fits in the JJ40 keyboard cases. So just as a sneak peek of what FAC firmware written in nickel looks like, uh, you can see there are a bunch of let statements. It's very much expression based. You can see a bunch of arrays and records. You can see some functions and some other interesting syntax going on. Uh, I'll go into more details about uh, a key map like this later. So I thought it'd be useful to just go over a few things about Nickel that might be new for some people. So unlike many programming languages, Nickel is expression-based, which means a Nickel file evaluates to a value, uh, in this case, value 5. But for a fact, the key map and the keyboard Nickel files evaluate to objects. Um, a couple of constructs that help out with this is the let in construct, where you can define names for uh, variables that get used. And another thing that helps is functions, which, just like in other languages, help abstract over common behavior. Just like JSON, Nickel has arrays, and the arrays can be concatenated using the at operator. Nickel also has objects with properties. You can use the standard dot notation to access properties. You can also use object destructuring. And objects can be constructed by combining two objects together using the ampersand. Anyway, let's look at a keyboard definition in fact. Let's define the keyboard for the CH55244. Here we have the keyboard definition in fact. The interesting parts for the keyboard to take note of are the matrix and the keys. With the matrix, we're defining the GPIO pins for the columns and for the rows. So if we compare with the schematic, we can see the rows and the columns correspond to the GPIO pins we have defined in FAC. And for the keys, we declare the column and the row for each of the keys in the grid. We can see we've arranged the keys that we have the first column going row by row, and then the second columns uh, going row by row across the columns like this. And if we look at the bottom of the circuit board, we can see this is how the keys are laid out, starting with the first column going row by row, moving on to the second column going row by row, uh, etc., etc. And here we have a trivial key map for the CH55244. This key map is only useful for checking that all the keys have been soldered correctly. Uh, at a glance, you can tell we've laid out the keys in this layers property of this key map object. Aside from this, we can see we've used a couple of let declarations just to make it more convenient to refer to some of the aliases. We have combo and tap imported from the FAC key code NCL file. Uh, the only interesting thing going on here is that we declare a virtual key using the four corner indices, uh, 0, 9, 32, and 43. Um, this is the first virtual key. And after the 44 keys in the key map, uh, 
this uh, tap.custom.fact.boot refers to the key behavior when the four corners are tapped. Before moving on to some more sophisticated examples, I thought it would be worth reviewing the elements of programming from Source Academy's comparison edition of SICP. Recall that the elements of programming involve primitive expressions where we have a means of combination and a means of abstraction. Because Nickel and other JSON plus functions programming languages provide means of combination and means of abstraction, they really allow for a very expressive and programmatic configuration of, in this case, keyboard and key map definitions. Or another idea I like thinking about in terms of this is Mike Hadlow's configuration complexity clock, where the idea is whether hard coding values or using JSON or using a DSL. And depending on perspective, uh, each approach has certain advantages over the other approach. Rephrasing the idea a bit, configure by using hard-coded values in a general purpose programming language. For example, writing your QMK keyboard uh, key map in C uh, has certain disadvantages compared to uh, using the data-driven JSON key map configuration, uh, certainly for the maintainers anyway. It is also very common to come across people who prefer general purpose programming languages over DSLs. For example, rather than using Terraform's HCL as a domain-specific language, uh, the idea of using Pulumi for writing cloud configurations in general purpose programming languages is quite popular. So this is the key map we're going to look at the implementation of in FAC. It more or less implements MANA Harbor's Mariyoku layout. So this first layer is just the alphas layer where we have the alphabetical keys and some uh, useful thumb keys. We have tap hold keys where holding down the key uh, provides alt, GUI, control, shift. Uh, and on the thumb keys we have a bunch of layers. So for example we have the number layer uh, with a few other symbols. These uh, numbers and symbols are shifted on the shifted number layer. We have the function layer as well. And then on the right hand side we have the navigation keys and uh, caps lock, caps word, and insert, as well as some media keys and uh, mouse control. Uh, I've also implemented uh, some additional features from Mariyaku uh, such as uh, entering the bootloader by holding down one of the thumb keys and double tapping the pinky key on the upper row, as well as switching between the base alphabetical keys and extra by double tapping. So this is implemented in this uh, nickel file here. If we skip to the end, we see we have an object with virtual keys and layers properties which has an array of alpha layers uh, concatenated with the supplemental layers. Uh, at the top of the screen here, you can see the end of the supplemental layers. And if we just scroll up a bit, uh, you can see the supplemental layers here, where we have the navigation layer, mouse layer, uh, the media layer, and the uh, numbers, shifted numbers, and function layer. Uh, the exact key codes for each of the keys is more or less specific to whatever keyboard framework you're working with, but the idea of laying out the layers in a key map like this uh, should not be too surprising. If we scroll back down and if we go look at the alpha layers definition, uh, we see here we have the layers QWERTY and Dvorak in an array. Uh, so the first thing we'll look at is this layouts object. Uh, so we get this imported from the layouts nickel file. Looking at the layouts nickel file here, uh, we see we import the key code from FAC. Uh, we see we have this helper function fix up alphas, which takes in a string of alphabetical keys. Uh, it replaces the regex for white space with nothing, so deleting all the white space, and turns the string uppercase. So if we look at this object here, uh, 
has Colmac, Tvorak, we go to the end, uh, QWERTY, and Workman. Uh, there are also different Marioku properties defined, where we replace the semicolon with the quote, uh, because this is how uh, Marioku's alpha layouts behave. Uh, anyway, these properties are piped into um, standard.record.mapValues function, with, uh, which calls the fix-up alphas. Uh, so, uh, piping the record into map values like this just means the uh, config record can be presented nicely and nice and human readable here, but we end up with the 30 character uppercase alphas that are nicer to work with with key codes. Added onto this record are a couple of helper functions. Uh, one is lift to key codes, where we um, take the string, map it into an array of characters, and uh, construct the array of uh, keycode.tap.regular.kc from each of these. Uh, we'll look at keycode later. And uh, two keycode segments, uh, where we split the uh, 30 character alphas string from above and we group it into left hand side, right hand side for each of the upper, middle, and lower rows. Uh, so key code, we made use of tap.reg.kc and looking at, at the bottom there, you can see that these grab the uh, values from HID codes, which is imported from HID codes. And HID codes is an array like this uh, representing the USB usage codes. Back to the key map, we were constructing the QWERTY and Vorak layers using the uh, QWERTY Marioku and Vorak Marioku values from layouts. Up here we have uh, make base layer, which if we look at this function, it uh, takes in the 30 character string of alphabetical keys and constructs the base layer for the key map. Uh, so if we just scroll down a bit we see that we get the segments using two key code segments, uh, where we make use of the left-hand side and right-hand side, upper, middle, lower rows. Um, and since the CH55244 has a few other keys, uh, we put uh, left control, left GUI, left alt, and right alt, right GUI, right control. Uh, we concatenate uh, these, so we have the left hand side concatenated with the right hand side uh, for the upper, middle, and the lower row we can fit a couple of other keys in between. And then we have the 12 keys on the bottom row where we concatenate the three modifier keys here with the six thumb keys and the other six keys. Uh, the rest of the file above uh, supports this essentially. So we have the uh, thumb row. We have uh, a function which uh, takes in uh, a few key codes and augments it with the home row modifiers. Home row modifiers, uh, the home row modifiers being defined here, where we have uh, alt, GUI, control, and shift. Uh, the function to augment the array of key codes with home row modifiers is a bit gnarly. Uh, I'm using standard.array.generate with the length of the key codes because uh, Nickel didn't really have a zip function because it doesn't really have uh, tuples. Uh, but essentially constructing the mod tap uh, or layer tap key is combining a key code object with the modifier key code with the hold tap behavior. Uh, the rest of the file is fairly straightforward, uh, but here's an example of uh, constructing tap dance key codes. Uh, so for the additional features, we want the user tap twice to activate the feature. Uh, we call the tap dance is constructed using uh, tap dance dot make with a timeout. 255 is the max. And then the array of key codes. So in this case, we have a, a no operation for tapped once. And then the functionality we want when tapped twice. 
So boot, base, and extra are defined above. Uh, so the no op is defined as tap.none and hold.none. The, uh, the boot is just an alias for tap.custom.fac.boot. Base and extra are the tap.layer.default with zero and one respectively. So I hope this helps uh, give you a taste of what writing uh, keyboard and key map firmware in FAC with the nickel configuration language is like.